In this video, we're going to be reviewing the Thor Broadcasting HDMI RF Petite. So let's go. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here on this channel, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com. Link is in the description. So let me just start this review off with why we even is looking at this. So at our church, we are using an HDM um, ATEM Mini to distribute HD quality video throughout the entire church. But as an integrator myself, I know how much it costs to pull cable and do converters, do all this other stuff throughout the building. So some people, that seems kind of a little bit pricey. So when I looked up this product, they promised that you have the ability to send HD video 720p, 1080i, 1080p over regular coax that's already in the wall, which is plentiful at my church. So I wanted to take this for a spin and see, can this solve what I need to do at my church? And it's gonna be a lot more cost effective. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. And let me put this out here first. I paid for this with my own money. So no one is paying for a review of this. This is me reviewing this to solve a solution at my church. So let's go ahead and let's cut over to the overhead cam. All right, so let's see what comes inside this nice little box here. So, I mean, I don't know why they had this lady is posing on here. I guess she's concentrating on something, I don't know. But anyway, so we have a QR code for the manual. Another manual, the Petite HDMI RF modulator or the HDMI RF Petite. We have the actual device, which is pretty small in comparison. So if I pull out, this is a Galaxy S10. You can see just a little bit bigger, about half the size of that. Let's take this out the bag here. All right, very nice. Actually has the flanges already on there. It doesn't come with any screws to mount this, but I mean, it's good that I can screw this down, I guess. Let's see what else is in here. All right, it comes with an HDMI cable, maybe three feet, and power adapter. That's pretty much it. All right, so let's look at the device here. So we have an HDMI, and I guess I, I had this backwards here. So we have an HDMI in, HDMI loop out, RF out, regular coax, and we have a RF in, have ethernet and power and have a ground if you wanna connect. So this can be controlled from the little console that's in the front. Honestly, you only got three buttons to go from. Um, and you have your power, link light, and encoding. Encoding is just making sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do. Link light is just the connection coming in. Um, so again, this device actually can only support 720, 1080i, 1080p signals coming in. So if you're trying to do 4K, this will not work with this. It also has a user interface that you can connect over your network. By default, the IP address for this device is 192.168.1.10, but you can switch this to DHCP, which is what I have done. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and connect this. And let me actually tell you before I even do that, what I'm gonna use this for. So we have the original A10 Television Studio where we're capturing HD and live streaming that, but inside of our church, we don't have that. So this is gonna solve two issues at the church. Earlier last week, I actually installed a 150 mile um, range um, HD antenna in the attic where our steeple fell. 
Um, I put that in that area because it's big open space. It's like the equivalent of an attic and hooked it up to the original um, SD converter that was converting everything over to the coax originally. So we already know of this concept, but we didn't know about an HD version of it. So the idea is we're gonna use the RFN to connect over the air HD antenna coming in. The ATEM HDMI out is gonna plug into here. So we're gonna be capturing the full signal that's coming in from the sanctuary through our cameras and everything 1080p, everything is gonna come into here and we're gonna set that to a channel. So based off of what the instructions say, we should be able to capture over the air as well as integrate to whatever channel we set it to for our live video from our sanctuary as another digital channel on all the TVs that are connected throughout the entire church over coax. And that's pretty much the plan. So what I'm gonna do is actually hook this up and we're gonna test out to see how good quality this is. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna hook this up behind my desk where I do have power and I have an internet connection. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and hook the PlayStation up to this so we can have a signal coming in. All right, so like I said, by default, it is set to connect over your browser at 192.168.1.10. Now, again, my IP addresses do not go from that, so I switched it to DHCP. So let's go ahead and connect to this box here. All right, so we are here, and by default, the username and password is user says that on the bottom of the device but here is the interface so right now you can see that i'm getting a link light because i actually have a signal i connected my playstation which is on um, and it's encoding so everything is good so from the status screen gives you your name your source your resolution so we're at 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames a second time zone current time hardware all of the fun stuff device name things like that so let's go through our basic parameters so under here, you can give it its name, its server, address. Um, you can set it to system time, let it pull a local time zone, set that. Um, your uh, time server, you pick that. Um, do you wanna support HDCP? Have that enabled. Um, modulation parameters, um, do you want this to show? And this is where I might have to change this when I get to my church. I don't know how everything is gonna come across, so I have it set as air right now, and I have it set at 40-1. That's the channel. Now, I have it set to that because originally our old one that did it over SD was at channel 40, so I don't want it to be that much different than what we're already doing. So if I change it to cable, I mean, I can set it the exact same way, so I might need to bounce back and forth. I just don't know. So right now, I just have it on that and 40 um select your list you know all this stuff i'm not really going over right now so i mean you can get more refined there if you wanted to but i'm just going to keep it like that constellation audio encoder i mainly leave all the stuff at default all right ts parameters really i'm not touching none of that stuff Network parameters, this is where I set it to DHCP. You can do this from the front console, which you have to do before I can do it this way. Um, and then this is just pulling from my local information right now. And then system parameters, you can download a backup, you can import a backup, you can do an upload, um, upgrade, factory, reset, reboot, and modulation settings, all this other stuff. Like, And then account, this is where you can change from the, the initial username and password and you can make something else i made our specific for our media ministry so that's pretty much it now i also have this being looped through our system so i want to see am i at least getting something with my line in so i believe that is one two that's line three here so let me see if I can go back to full screen 
here on the ATEM and let's go over to number three. We should be getting the PlayStation, which is looping through on the HDMI output of the Thor. And as you can see, boom, we got, we're getting a signal. So now just to verify that that's what this is, let's go ahead and shut down my PlayStation here. And there should be just a Thor label on here, I believe, or that might just be for the TV channel. Okay, I think it's just for the TV channel. All right. So at least we do know that a signal is coming through on this. Um, what I'm probably going to do now is take this to my church, and then we're going to test this out again. But what we're going to do is actually have something coming out over HDMI through the loop through as well as hook up a coax cable to it into a TV and see what we get. All right, so originally we had this uh, PM45 audio video modulator, which would send everything over the RF out similar. So we would set this to channel 40, have a signal come in, and then this box, this Kramer box, converted the VGA into a CV out. And that's what connected to this device, which turned this into a TV channel, which was channel 40 for this all to work. That is the box I was saying that originally turned everything, scaled it down to SD. So that's what used to exist in here. It used to be right here and then the other box sat right here. But now the Thor Broadcasting is gonna replace that entire thing. The difference between that other device is you can actually hook up an antenna into this. So what I did in the previous last week is I installed an antenna here in our attic. Well, I guess you can call it an attic because it's pretty much open space. This is where our steeple was connected that fell down a while ago. So I have this antenna inside of here and that's running over that coax cable all the way down here and back into this where this box is gonna exist. So you can see that's what that white cable right there is. So what we're gonna do is now that cable is connected to where it's feeding to all the TVs that are over coax right now. And we're able to get 40 channels over the air to all the TVs right now. So the idea is that we will hook this up to that box, get all of the channels over the antenna, but then everything here in our sanctuary will be another channel that we set in this box. And now all the TVs get over the air broadcast stations as well as the sanctuary so let's go ahead and install it and then we're going to connect to it and all this other stuff like that all right we got everything installed oh. all right so what we got is we're coming out of our hyperdeck um, studio mini which is recording because that has hdmi out because the regular HDMI out from our um, television studio is going to our VGA converter, which goes to our projectors. So I didn't want to disrupt that because every time you add a device inside this, it slows everything down. So this is going to be fine. So we have this here and we're coming HDMI out out of this into this device and we have it connected to the network. And as you can see, we are getting something. So I know what I forgot to do. I forgot to hook up this coax to that TV down there so we can see what's going on. So let me hook that up and then we can see what the result is because whatever we're seeing right here, we should see on our channel. And let's go through our settings real quick. We wanna make sure we have, it's connected to our network because by default it sets it to a different IP address. Okay, so that's um, DHCP is on. So we should be getting a, an IP address over the network. I'm gonna hard code this 
on our router to always get the same IP address. And yeah, so everything else is gonna be done over the um, over the web interface. So let's find the IP address and let's configure that. And then I need to hook this up to our TV down there so we can see what we're getting. All right, so let's go ahead and log into our Unify controller and we can find out what the IP address is for this device. Go ahead and log in there. And see, and this is why I had to set it to DHCP because the natural IP address of this device is the same thing as our Unify controller, which would give us some issues. All right, so it actually has a name, so it should be easy to find our IP address. Out. That's the wrong one. Looking for yeah, clients. We're going for wired, and there it is, the HDMI RF Petite, and that is two three two. So let's go ahead and log into that. And I'd already set a password and username for this. All right, so let's go back here first and let's set this IP address to always be this. Uh, configure network fixed. All right, so we're always gonna be on this. Now I have, everything normally is get powered off here in the media booth, but this device has to stay on. That's how anybody else is gonna be um, being able to use this. So what I'm probably gonna do is get another um, smart plug and that way I can turn that off at night along with everything else so it doesn't just stay on. It'll turn on at 6 a.m. Um, that's right when the learning center and stuff like that gets here and then just turn it off at uh, 11 o'clock at night uh, something like that or maybe just one o'clock in the morning um, so give it some rest something like that so um, I might even put even more of a schedule on that but that should be good. All right, so now that we got that, let's go over to here to the devices. So we already have everything set up. I have it set up to accept air um, in all of the other settings where you can set the channel it needs to go on. I have it set right now to channel 40 and two. And I'm gonna switch it over to cable. I'm gonna set that to 40 and two as well too. Like how it resets. I don't know which one is going to do. It all depends. So I'm just going to have them both set. All right. So we got this done. So now I didn't hook up the coax to this TV. So let's go ahead and do that. I have this set up right now. Um, the same thing that's showing up on the HyperDeck right now is our center camera. So when we switch over, this is our regular ATEM that's showing everything. So this is the same thing that should show up when we go to channel 40-1. So let's go ahead and switch our input to TV and let's go ahead and go to menu and we need to scan for our channel. Now again, we have this set as air so or antenna and let's see what we get. All right, so we got one channel, which technically should be all we gotta do. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop it because that's the only thing that should be coming over the cable. So let's, and there we go. Very clear picture. So let's go ahead and switch back to our input. All right, that's the same thing. Go to TV. And as you can see, channel 40-1, it even says Thor Phi, <laughs> which I think is kind of cool. So we at least know what's going on. So let me show you what happens when you actually disconnect this. So when everything here in the sanctuary is off, we should get just a blank channel well, obviously we don't get nothing here. Yeah, okay, so we're just gonna get this Thor broadcast type of wallpaper, so that's good. All right, so now what we're gonna do is hook up the antenna that's in the, the little attic space right there. We're gonna hook that in and then scan this again and do we get any additional channels? All right, so we have the coax 
coming from the antenna that's plugged in, but we're still only connecting to that one TV. So, all right, let's see what we get because we're going to have to scan everything all over again. All right, so let's go to menu, TV settings, tuner, and auto scan. Now we're leaving it on antenna, hoping that it's going to pick up everything because if not, we're gonna have to go and change it to cable. Okay, so we're starting to pick up the antenna channels. So air is gonna be good. So that's gonna save with all, cause one of the issues we used to have here when we were doing this is we had to switch to cable to watch the sanctuary, but then switch to air to have regular um, channels. So the idea with this is to make it simple to where you just go to a specific channel, that's the sanctuary, but then you go to the other channel for everything else. So that's less people having to go touch or change cables or unhook coaxes behind the TV. It just works. So it will function just like old school. You just hook up a coax to your TV. It doesn't matter if it's a smart TV or nothing, and it just plugs in. Now, one thing I did not do while this is scanning that I forgot to bring with me is somebody asked me, would this work with like a, a HD home run or a Tableau? And I meant to test that. So I probably will bring that with me tomorrow and hook that up and see if that will work. Because if that works, that would help me avoid having to run a coax cable in our chapel on our 4K TV. Because we can just output that and download the app and in that one TV or any smart TVs, it can pull up everything, all of the over the air stuff, as well as the sanctuary channel without really having to touch anything. So let's go ahead and fast forward this to the end. All right, as we come close to the end, it looks like we lost about eight channels. Not really sure. Might need to change the channel on the Thor to see if that changes anything. I needed it fast. Don't make a costly mistake. Find out what your case All right, so that's cool. So as you can see, very, very clear picture of over the air. And let's hook back up the feed coming from our ATEM. That way we can have another channel. All right, so let's see. Let's see what we get. All right, and there's 40 hyphen one. Boom, sanctuary. So let's switch over. Let me turn this front camera on and let's switch to that. Just so we can see that this is coming from the sanctuary. And we'll go to our front camera. And there we go. Very, very clear picture. Awesome. All right, so I would say this, this is a success. Um, I could always get more channels by putting another, combining another antenna, but the main mission was to get the sanctuary in HD throughout the church over coax and this accomplished this. So now all I'm gonna do is hook back up the main feed that goes to all the TVs because this is a test. And then I just gotta rescan all the other TVs to get this new channel. So I think we're good to go. I'm gonna have a looping video put on um, here from ProPresenter to go throughout the entire system. So that'll be a good test because I haven't tested audio and that'll be another way for me to do that. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, we have a success. Looks very, very HD on this side. Um, for whatever reason, we're getting less channels on the side. So not really sure what was going on with that. I think that might be a setting with the Thor, but it's great to see that this is actually working. So awesome. So instead of running all this extra cable like we've had to do, we were able to just use the coax that already was in the walls and boom, now we have full quality here over in our multi-purpose room and then the other TVs throughout the building. 
All right, so everything is working great. Um, all the way on the other side of the building. I just have to wait for the other people to get here so I can get to the remote so I can tune all the rest of the other TVs. But I think they'll be pleasantly surprised at the picture quality that is now available throughout the entire church. So when more people start coming back to church and they don't feel comfortable maybe sitting here in the sanctuary, they can go to any other location inside the church where a TV is in the coax and then they'll be able to watch from there. So link will be in the description for the product that I got. And just to let you know, last time I, I bought mine from Amazon, like I said, no one's paying for this review. I bought this with my own money and I got mine from Amazon. But if you go directly to the link below, I'll have the Amazon link as well as the actual makers of the device, Thor Fiber, I believe. They actually have this on sale for $50 cheaper than what I paid for, um, I think for the next four days, three days, something like that. So be kind of quick. This is June 1st as of this recording. So anyway, if you like this type of content, I appreciate a like. Consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com. Link is in the description. You can get started with as little as $1 a month to help grow this channel and help us get more equipment and other ways to help train media ministries all over the world. So this is AJ. We will see you on the next video. Later.